Hey guys, so today I'm taking a midterm exam. I just started a new um, certificate course that I'm taking for work. Uh, it's four years, it's one class um, per semester, and it's for people who work in the industry um, already, and they take this course part-time online. So it's pretty convenient, but um, yeah, I started in September. I'm uh, six weeks into it, and I have my mid first midterm today. I figured this might be a cool opportunity to just talk a little bit about my experience and being back in school and studying and yeah, so I thought I'd just um, take you guys along and kind of get some more practice vlogging outside of the house um, and in public. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, it's about an hour drive down and I have to leave in a few hours and we are just in the meantime hanging out, me and Hazel. She's got a doggy date here today. A uh, corgi named Larry who's hanging out with us while his companion is at work. So watch that and I'll be right back. <laughs> six months and the first point that I faced was this reaction of I'm not absorbing the information I felt like I was reading I was participating in the discussions but I felt like the information wasn't being absorbed into me like I wasn't retaining the information it actually opened up this point of feeling like I was not smart enough, not educated enough, I wasn't smart enough basically to be in the class. It actually opened up um, this whole process of living words, which um, I'll share some links in the description that kind of give an idea about what living words is and how I practice it and apply it in my life. But I, I noticed I started saying the word retard. The word retarded started showing up in my vocabulary as describing certain things. I used it as a point of, well, that's dumb. Um, that's how I described it. I would use the word, that's retarded. And initially it was like, I said it, and then after a few times I'm like, where does this word come from? Because A, it's not socially acceptable. It's very much frowned upon. It's something that I've been told that I shouldn't say, um, especially in the context of saying it means it's you're dumb or slow or Handicap. So when it started emerging in my vocabulary, I was like, where is this word coming from? So I did some like writing, a process of writing to understand, okay, well, where is this word actually coming from? And I realized it was coming from this point of me feeling inadequate and slow and inferior, basically, in relation to the material I was learning in school. I felt like I was handicapped. I felt it was my way of defining myself as dumb. And so that was a word I was living within me. And I could tell based on the words that it showed up in my vocabulary. I could tell based on the reactions I was having. I was having negative reactions to having to sit down and read the material and participate in the discussions, feeling like I was behind, feeling like no way I could catch up. So a couple things within this that I did to support myself was I first, you know, did my writing and my self-forgiveness on defining this word within a negative context uh, for defining myself as inferior or incapable and putting it into context basically like understanding that I'm learning new information. It's going to be a process of development. It's going to be a process that takes time for me to get comfortable within. Uh, my routine is changing so I have to be understanding with myself that um, I am adjusting to a new routine and a new schedule. So those were the points that I was looking at uh, to support myself, which helped. Um, so I did my forgiveness um, and I put it into context for myself that it's going to take time to adjust to this new schedule. It's going to take time to um, get comfortable with the material. You know, I, I'm starting to read more than I've been reading in the last few years. So, you know, it's an adjustment and that's okay. It takes time and that's okay and you will get there. And then one of the cool points that came up not too long after this process that I walked was um, a quiz. Three or four weeks into the 
semester and we had a little pop quiz and I took it and I did really well and I surprised myself that I did that well because I was coming from this idea that I wasn't absorbing the information, I didn't know the information, I wasn't retaining the information, I couldn't know the information, like I had this very diminished self-definition and belief about myself. So the quiz was a cool cross-reference to see you are actually learning, I am you know, understanding the, the material, you know, it is placed within me in a way that I can utilize it. That was a cool point to realize. Another point that I realized in considering and putting into context my experience um, going into this new semester was I'm an American and I currently live and work and reside in Canada and so I'm learning about the Canadian uh, legal system and the history of Canada and where it got its legal system from which is England and so obviously England has an influence on the American um, judicial system but Canadian system it was like this point of I didn't have a close relationship to C Canada or to can to um, the Canadian system if I was learning the US legal system I don't think I would have had as difficult time as I did or as many reactions as I did because I have more of a relationship to the American system because I am an American. I grew up in that system. The fact that I am an American in Canada and I'm learning about the legal system in Canada, it, there was like a disconnect. There was a point of like I couldn't really place the information inside of me because it's almost like it didn't it doesn't exist it didn't exist because I did not grow up in this system so that was an interesting point and really supportive for me also to realize that that can definitely be contributing to my experience Hello. I did want to share this point that I am realizing and remembering now that I'm back in school and studying and taking these tests I was never one to ever experience like test anxiety which I'm really grateful for because I've heard horror stories. I had friends in high school who really had a rough experience when it came to tests, which is unfortunate because, you know, you study so hard and you do so many activities throughout a semester and then the one test is what is supposed to determine how you're learning. And I don't think it's effective because people do have these. You know, it's almost like the anxiety that people have in relation to tests is because we place so much emphasis on the test when that does not really indicate whether someone is retaining the information or understanding the information. I don't think it's an effective way to um, test people, you know, having just like a one-off exam. I never experienced test anxiety and I'm really grateful and one thing I realized is because I never really cared. I was not a very uh, big academic in high school. I was not interested in being in the classroom. I was interested in being in the hallways and hanging out with my friends and socializing is what I was interested in. Tests were not like a big deal to me because I didn't care, like it was not a big deal. And what I found was I often did well on tests because I didn't have this added pressure of worrying about how I would do and how that would affect me later on down the road. Is that going to keep me from getting into college? Like I didn't have any of that, those experiences. Partly I think is because I didn't grow up in an educated home. There wasn't a lot of emphasis placed on education. You know, perhaps if I grew up in a different environment, it would have been different for me and I would have had a different experience. I just didn't ha have a lot of emphasis placed on that within me. I am heading into this midterm exam tonight and I I'm feeling okay about it, like I'm not worried. I've taken three practice tests, or two practice tests, plus we had um, a quiz recently, and to me that's a great way to study the information and kind of see where I'm at, and I'm feeling pretty okay and comfortable, and I'm not allowing myself to add any pressure to myself. So I would suggest for anyone who does have those um, anxieties um, in relation to taking tests is stop breathe and look at why do you have that experience where is it coming from because I, I bet you they're coming from your thoughts and you can get to know those thoughts and what those thoughts are specifically saying and you can just entangle and dismantle those thoughts and actually remove them from yourself uh, through a process of writing and self-forgiveness and self-corrective statements so I don't think a test anxiety is uh, something that people are doomed to have, like some people have it and some people don't. I think it's very specific to the person. It's your relationship to tests. 
And so you can get to know and understand what is your relationship to taking tests and to taking exams and you can change it. You can make it to be a supportive relationship so it's no longer something that weighs on you and is a burden and is something that you dread and it's something that could potentially compromise you um, in your in your education. If you want further support, definitely reach out. I'm happy to support where I can. Otherwise, I'll um, suggest to check out light.destinyiprocess.com. I'll put the link below. It's an awesome free course that gives you introduction tools of getting to know your mind and getting to know who you are in relation to these certain things like taking tests. And it's going to support you to understand why you have the thoughts you do, why you have the experiences you do, why you have the feelings and emotions that you do and what you can do about them. We're definitely not victims to how we feel. We can change it. Hey guys, so just got out. So I just got out of the test, but I don't want to say anything about the test. I actually just want to talk about my experience on this campus. This is the first time I've been to this campus because it's online. Uh, the course that I take. So this is the first time I've been here and I parked maybe half a mile from where I had to go to take the test and it's night time and I got out by myself and I was so afraid that there was going to be a predator hiding in the bushes that is going to jump out at me and try to rape me or murder me or that was the thoughts that was running through my head or like getting out of the classroom and being in these vac vacant school halls which I had never been in I was like so creeped out that was the experience like fear fear of being alone fear of um, being vulnerable fear of being attacked I have a lot of self-forgiveness to do and points to look at because I know that that experience is not based on this campus it's something that you know is embedded in all of us you know the stranger danger and don't walk alone at night and the fact that humans abuse each other and harm each other that's the world that we live in so the fear from one perspective is valid i also see that there's memories associated to it and there is deeper programming there that i can release myself from so that i don't have to be afraid because if i am walking with common sense and making sure that i'm not putting myself in a compromising position then I don't have anything to be afraid of the test otherwise went pretty well yeah I'm satisfied like you know it was open book we got to use our notes I mean testing these days seem to be like I wonder how it was a hundred years ago I feel like our education system has not done us well like we oftentimes have to depend and lean on these other things like our books and our notes you know open book it's just like wow isn't the point to learn this information so that we have it, we don't need the book? It's like a red flag that obviously something's not working. The system is somehow ineffective. Why aren't we learning the information without the need of the textbook? Heading back now to home. I have about a just under an hour drive. Yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.